Hello and welcome to our daily devotion from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Adam Moline. Today we're going to continue our look at the Augsburg Confession. Today we move on to Article 15, which deals with the topic of free will. This is a really important doctrine for us to understand, especially in our day and age, when so many people are asserting their free will uh, in so many different topics. That's fine, but we want to make sure we get our theology correct as we apply that doctrine to our salvation. So, Article 18 of the Augsburg Confession, Free Will. Our churches teach that a person's will has some freedom to choose civil righteousness and to do things subject to reason. It has no power without the Holy Spirit to work the righteousness of God, that is, spiritual righteousness. For the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, 1 Corinthians 2. This righteousness is worked in the heart when the Holy Spirit is received through the Word, Galatians 3, 2 through 6. This is what Augustine says in his Hypnoxticon, book number 3. We grant that all people have a free will. It is free as far as it has the judgment of reason. This does not mean that it is able, without God, either to begin or at least to complete anything that has to do with God. It is free only in works of this life, whether good or evil. Good I call those works that spring from the good in nature, such as willing to labor in the field, to eat and to drink, to have a friend, to clothe oneself, to build a house, to marry a wife, to raise cattle, or learn various useful arts, or whatsoever good applies to this life. For all of these things that depend on the providence of God... They are from Him and exist through Him. Works that are willing to worship an idol, to commit murder, and so forth, I call evil. Our churches condemn the Pelagians and others who teach that without the Holy Spirit, by natural power alone, we are able to love God above all things and to do God's commandments according to the letter. Although nature is able, in a certain way, to do the outward work, for it is able to keep the hands from theft and murder, yet it cannot produce the inward motions, such as the fear of God, trust in God, chastity, patience, and so on. Thus far, Article 18 of the Augsburg Confession. Dear friends in Christ, there is freedom in many, many different things. You have freedom to choose to cheer for the Huskers or to cheer for Iowa or Oklahoma or Miami. You have freedom in that. It will not affect your salvation if you cheer for a team different than your neighbor. You have freedom to decide where you live as long as you can pay for it. You have freedom to decide whether you wear shorts or pants, depending on the weather. You have freedom in many, many things. But when it comes to your salvation, you are bound, bound in sin, bound against God's will. You have sinned even from the moment you were conceived in your mother's womb, and the sin in one sense, has already made that decision for you. To be separated from God. To divide you from the one who created you. There's nothing within your will that you can do to change that. The die has been cast, to quote Julius Caesar. So then how are we saved? through the work of the Holy Spirit, who calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the entire Christian, earth on earth, Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. 
God works through the Holy Spirit, through the Word, through baptism, through the Lord's Supper to make you Christian. He does it based on his own will, apart from any decision or choice or thought within you. This is what the church has taught since the very earliest days. It is written in the book of Galatians and Ephesians. We are saved by grace through faith, and this not of ourselves. It is a work of God. Dear friends in Christ, you cannot choose to save yourself. You do not have free will in that question. God alone saves, and he saves by Jesus, crucified and risen to take away the sins of the world. Now, when you are saved, when God does bring you into the church through the means of grace, then you have great freedom with what to do with your salvation, to love and care for the people who are around you. But do not be confused. You have not saved yourself. So go on choosing where you live, who you cheer for, how you comb your hair, or whether or not to brush your teeth. But remember, God has saved you in Jesus. And you cannot add or subtract from that by your reason or by your strength. In the name of Jesus, amen.